Quick question, is your Christian growth being held back by some unconscious fear of the future? So today we're continuing our series on the parable of the sower found in Matthew chapter 13. If you've missed any of the previous parts, make sure you go back and watch from the beginning so that you can get the full context on what we're talking about. The link will be in the description for the playlist. In this video, we'll be focusing on the seeds that landed among thorns, which grew up and choked them out. And you can find this in verse seven and further explained by Jesus in verse 22. So let's get into it. So the first thing that strikes me about this example is that the thorns didn't choke out the seeds straight away. There was a period of time in which the thorns first had to grow before eventually choking out the gospel message from being fruitful. But what does that period of the thorns growing actually look like? Well, Jesus' explanation from verse 22 makes it clear that the thorns are the cares of this world, so life in the present age, and the deceitfulness of riches. That's what eventually chokes out the seed and stops it from bearing fruit. Now this isn't about us becoming a bunch of people who completely disconnect from the world and do nothing more than sing Maranatha in the middle of a field until Jesus returns. There's a place for engaging in the world that we live in. So buying a house or building your career doesn't somehow make you any less godly, but it's about our priorities and how we engage with the world and worldly matters with a kingdom perspective. How we're able to do things on earth like earn a living without losing ourselves and completely forgetting the wider kingdom picture. You see, when Jesus was speaking here about the cares of this world, the root word translated into care here also means worries and anxieties. So the underlying issue that grows here in these people is to do with their worries and anxieties that are connected to the present world that we live in. And as those worries and anxieties grow even more, they eventually stop putting their trust in God and the bigger implications of the gospel message. Instead, they end up defending against those anxieties and worries by chasing more and more wealth, being deceived into thinking that that will somehow put their anxieties at ease. But let's go back a step. What do those anxieties and worries look like? Well, it could be scenarios like, where am I gonna live? I've got these huge bills to pay and I'm not sure that I can afford them. Or even I'm in a recession or even a global pandemic and people in my workplace are being fired left, right and centre. Or maybe even my wife is pregnant and we can't afford to raise another child. Plus so much more. And maybe even more relevant for some of us, we've been so bombarded by internet gurus, influencers and people who unconsciously incite discontentment and even fear of the future. And so we're not even really defending it against a real and present need to make more money. But instead, it's about anticipating sometime in the future where danger is coming. And so we work long hours, maybe take on extra jobs or even start our own businesses. But at times, we fail to realise that whilst in some situations that might be the right move for you to make, there is the possibility that the thing driving it underneath is actually fear and wrong motives. So what's God's response to our anxieties? Well, in Matthew 6, he tells us to not be anxious about our lives, but instead seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, giving us the wider picture about how much our father cares about us and our needs. In Philippians 4, he tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we should make our requests known to God. In Proverbs 3, we're told to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding and that we should acknowledge him in all our ways and he will make our path straight. And there's plenty more things throughout the scriptures that give us a better view of what God's response to our anxieties are. It ultimately comes back down to us putting our trust in him rather than putting our trust in things like riches and earthly wealth in order to fix our anxieties. Be confident that whether you have a lot or whether you don't have much, that God will supply what you need. These are the things that help us not to get caught up in the anxieties and worries related to this world that can eventually choke out the effectiveness of the gospel in our lives. And so instead of trying to fix the worries and the anxieties related to this life with chasing more and more wealth, instead, we should turn to him remembering the gospel of the kingdom, the eternal hope that we have, the new heavens and the new earth, and the fact that no matter what the outcome is in this life, we win in the end. Otherwise, those worries and anxieties will eventually overtake us to the point that the message of the kingdom becomes unfruitful in us. And so is your Christianity being held back by some unconscious fear of the future. Peace.